Welcome back to another episode of the Unbound Book Babes. And this week, get ready to be so frustrated. Just kidding. Maybe. Um, We are going to be reviewing the different types of e-readers that you can choose from. And if you're anything like me, I just picked a Kindle Paperwhite because I didn't do any research before I bought it. And it was just the first e-reader to pop up. Anyways... Now that we've done the research and looked into all of these, I'm so mad. I feel grifted by Amazon. And spoiler alert, it's not the best one on the market. It doesn't have the most functions. It's not the cheapest. (sighs) The more you know. That's all right. (laughs) But it might be the right fit for some people. Correct. So Bobby's still going to walk us through facts and features and capabilities. Well... You have to check out our previous episode. We did all sorts of tips and tricks, but now we're going to get into dollars and cents and graphics and PPIs. Yeah. So for the Kindle, Amazon actually offers several different types of Kindles. So I wanted to cover some of the cost, the memory, and some different things about those Kindles in comparison to the other uh, brands of e-readers that we're also going to cover in this episode. So to start out with, all of these Kindle devices have 300 pixels per inch PPI, and so that screen view is going to be relatively the same. Something that changes about the screen is going to be the size. So I will tell you the display size as I cover each individual Kindle device. So to start out with, I'm going to start out with the Kindle Paperwhite, uh, which is actually the Kindle that I have. It's eight gigabytes and it runs you $140. It is black and it is waterproof and it charges with a USB-C. Uh, I love my Kindle. I do. Uh, hindsight, after owning it for a year and doing research for, for this episode, I don't know if I would have chosen it. Uh, I did choose it because I bought it either during Black Friday or Prime Day, and I actually got it for $90. So make sure you uh, stick it out and hold off on those and wait for those deals when it comes to these devices. The next device is the Paperweight Signature Edition. So this comes with 32 gigabytes of like on-device storage but it will run you $190. The screen has a 6.8 inch screen, uh, 10 weeks of battery life has Bluetooth, just like the other paper white, but this one has wireless charging. You can get this device in black, agave, green, and denim. I really don't think I want to spend $190 at all, uh, but I really like that agave green. If you know anything about me, green and purple, green and purple. So how very royal of you. <laughs> yes. Um, you can also get, uh, I just want to touch on this really quick because I think it's a really cool thing for if there is children in your life who are readers. I actually have uh, some nieces and nephews who are pretty big readers. Um, So they've got Kindle Paperweights for kids. These come as ad-free with Audible automatically kind of with them. Um, And I was reading some forums and some people are like, you should just buy the Kindle Paperweight Kids and turn off like the the parental feature so you can get ads free and like the audio on there as well, like together. I was like, that's super clever. They also have some really cool um, like kid covers for them. So you can get an Emerald Forest, a Warrior Cat or Robot Dreams. So those are kind of cute and fun for, for the child in your life. The next item is the Kindle Oasis. So this has eight gigabytes. It runs you $200. It has a seven inch display and it has two buttons on the one side for turning your page. So this is like a one handed, like you can click the top button to go forward or back and vice versa for for the bottom button. It is also waterproof and Bluetooth capable. But I don't know who made this decision. It charges with a micro USB. You're Ew! Gonna, 
you're going to charge me $200 and then make me have this extra ass cable. That's different from anything else else. I own in my life. Yeah. I was just like, that Um, right there would be a huge absolutely not from me. Like, there's no way. I... I find that so unacceptable. I'm like, this is, it's, it's, I was like, it's, tw- I think the Oasis came out in like 2022 or something like that. I was like, this, it's, what? It's 2022. What are you doing with yourself, Amazon? Who made that, that design choice? No, absolutely not. And so my friend Paige actually has a Paperwhite, an Oasis, and a Scribe. I, Whoa. Yes, we know. We know. Um, And she recently got the page turner device for her paper white. And she says that she would um, happily uh, not own her Oasis anymore now that she has that little page turner remote, uh, which I have too. Um, And if you pop down to our webpage to our Amazon recommendations, it's actually linked in our Amazon recommendations uh, along with my little holder that like holds my kindle so i don't have to hold my kindle at all and i can just click a button and be curled up in my blanket it was my birthday gift this year from kristen which i'm super super grateful for um so if you're interested in that pop down in the description and check out that link on our website and get yourself a little clicker to turn your page for you and (laughs) i was really just using you as a guinea pig to see if those two things worked well I love them. <laughs> at the time, I, at the time, I didn't have a Kindle, so I was like, I was just so goddamn curious to see if it worked. <laughs> it, I love them. Yep, I have like it clicks onto my bed frame, and I can just lay in bed and click a button. It's perfect. I love it. That's amazing. I'm gonna get me one. <laughs> Next is the Scribe. So the Scribe it has 64 gigabytes. It costs. $420. But, Does it also do my laundry? <laughs> Girl, I would hope so. <laughs> it doesn't, but I would really hope so. It does. <laughs> it is a uh, digital notebook on top of being an e-reader, and it comes mm. with a pen. Um, there's two. There's a basic pen and like a pro pen. I don't know the difference between those. I just know that the basic pen was out of stock, so I just didn't care to look or pay attention to what it is um and plus like i don't know i don't know like i make because you can make notes in the book but it's not all books like you can't necessarily make a note in all books and then on top of that it's a notes like like how when you're reading a Kindle and you want to make a like a my paper white, I can click on something and highlight it and I can actually make a note and I type the note. It's the same like pop up bubble. You can just write in it. So I'm like, I don't know if that's different enough. I don't need to pay an extra three hundred dollars just to make a written note in my own shitty handwriting. I'm sorry, terrible handwriting. <laughs> I would agree with that. Um, the display is two times larger than the Kindle Paperbyte, but but I would hope so if you're gonna it's it's gonna be like a notebook as well as an e-reader. I don't know. It's but the re- so the remarkable pad is just like a notebook. Mm-hmm. That's only two hundred, hundred and fifty, two hundred bucks. Yeah. So to buy a Kindle Paperwhite and a Remarkable, I mean, granny, now you have two devices. Still saves you a hundred some odd dollars. Yeah. I don't know. There's something I'm not getting about that one. There's something I'm not understanding. For the price, there's something I don't get. Yeah, I would agree with that. The display is 10.3 inches, by the way. I'm sorry. I don't think I uh, mentioned that. I did say it's two times larger, but not the actual measurement. I do have a note of it, so (laughs) I'll mention it. But yeah, I just, I don't know. But that is your Kindle products. You know, there is, they are what they are. They're very popular, you know. Um, They're linked to so many books. They work with Libby. They work with Hoopla. They work with, obviously, Kindle Unlimited. They don't like, work with Hoopla. Oh, it's that only sucks. Libby. It's only Libby. What is Hoopla? Is Hoopla you read in the app? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep, I read on my phone or on my iPad. Interesting. Okay, so they work with Libby and... Kindle Unlimited. Yep. The next e-reader 
blew my mind a little bit Ooh. when I learned about it. Um, and it, one of them has recently, one of their e-reader offerings has become very popular because of TikTok. So Onyx Books, B-O-O-X, um, are e-ink devices. So they look just like the screen on a Kindle. They're, um, almost all of their devices are also 300 pixels uh, PPI, uh, except for one, and I'll, I'll mention that one. But the thing about the, the books product is that it's actually powered by Open Android 11. Uh, so you can have third-party apps, and it has built-in RAM, and it, so with, that's like onboard operating system storage. So they tend to be significantly faster uh, and just operating them and clicking around the screen than a Kindle is. Boom, they've stolen my heart. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> so so because you can have third-party apps, I could have Hoopla on there and my eBooks could then be in e-ink. I could have Libby and not have to send it anywhere. I could have Kobo Books and send it in there. If you want to know more about those specific apps, we have an episode on that, and I'll be sure to link it in the cards up top. Be sure to check it out because it is super interesting, especially with Kobo, uh, what you can, like just their offerings in general and how you can save money and still read a crap ton of books. So... Getting back to the books product itself, though, and their specific e-readers that they sell, um, the first one we're going to talk about is the Poke 5. This has 32 gigabytes of onboard storage, and it's $170 with a 6-inch screen. It also has expandable memory, though, because... Is that a lot? Six inches? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Comment down below and let Ladies. us know if that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> I love it. Um, it also has expandable memory uh, in the form of using a micro SD card. And you also get 10 gigabytes because this is, you can Bluetooth and Wi Fi with this device, just like the Amazon um, Kindles. You get 10 gigabytes of free cloud storage on top of your already 32 gigabytes. So that's pretty cool. Not only that, it's compatible with multiple file type formats for ebooks. So you get EPUB, Mobi, Text, CBR, all of that. You can also have. It, go ahead. Did you already say, does it work with Kindle? Did you already talk about that? Yeah, so you can have, because it's. You it, could just have the app. Yeah, you could just have the app on it. Yeah. Damn. I know. Mistakes were made, girl. <laughs> Mistakes were made. This oh, this makes man. way more sense for all of the the options that I use to to like Libro FM. Uh my Hoopla, which Hoopla is probably outside of Kindle. Hoopla is the number one reading app I use. And then it's probably my Kindle. And then like Libro FM, you can have um, Libby, uh, Kobo, you can have all of these on there. You have access to so much content because of that open Android 11 software. You can, they also have send to books, um, where you can transfer your eBooks from like a computer or a phone from just from another device wirelessly. So it's like through an app and you can send it to it. So if you had, you know, purchase an eBook from Barnes and Noble, you could send it to the device, and because it can read multiple types of formats, you can read that ebook. Um, wow. Yeah, right? That's what I'm saying. And then it also has USB C charging, which is the little round one, that the new one. The new one, yep, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> As you can tell, I am clearly IT competent. <laughs> so. <laughs> If you want to see more content like this, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified every time we upload. It really helps us out. They also have a Poke 4 Lite, and that one is $140. The differences are it has a 212 PPI, a recessed screen, and that's like about it. So it's like 
very small differences. The only thing that sucks about these two devices is currently on the Onyx Books website, there you can't there's no add to cart. They're currently unavailable. It Unacceptable. Could, yeah. So you got my hopes up and then <laughs> smashed them. Built me up so you could tear me down. Yes, a little bit there. Um, but <laughs> just wait. This next one is a little expensive. But it's in stock, it's available, and it's called the Books Palma. So this is basically like, think of an, a device that is the size of like an iPhone Pro. So a larger device, like my phone, I don't like the iPhone Pros because they're like too big for me to like use on a daily basis and I don't, I don't prefer that. But for reading and having all of these apps because it's the same type of software, it's run on Android 11. This device has six gigabytes, but it will run you $280. It does come with a case. It has a 6.13 inch display and it comes in black and white. It has expandable storage again with a micro USB that can hold a USB, a micro USB up to 128 gigs. So that's a lot of ebooks. <laughs> There's a lot of storage <laughs> in general, especially if you're going to have apps on them, like all these different reading apps. It's really nice to have that option of that expandable storage. It is water repellent and it has mm. this phone like experience, but in an e ink screen. And you can also do widgets. So you could have your, like your calendar app as a widget. You can have like if your book, uh, like your audio, like Audible has like a widget that you can do. You can put a widget on your screen, stuff like that. It also has a 16 megabyte camera and flash that is intended to use for document scanning. So you can take a picture of something and then be able to read it in an ink format and save it for later. I don't, I couldn't, Fascinating. yeah, I couldn't find anything about having, um, like pictures on it, but I don't know how the pictures, like they would just be in like a flat matte black and white e-ink style, which is kind of cool in and of itself in a way. <laughs> um, so it also has buttons on the side, like a phone would. So they have, um, a volume button, but also you can, it can be a page turning button and like a scrolling button for like on a site. And then there's a customizable button as well. So you can like customize what that, that is set for. Advance your page, return, or go back a page, stuff like that. So honestly, like the price tag is a little bitter for me being at the, you know, the $300, but, or the $280. There's so much capability in it that I could understand why that is mm -hmm. a justifiable, like you could almost justify that price. I really wish that the, the Poke 5 was in stock because I would have bought that for sure. I could justify $170 for all of my apps being in one place and having that e-ink experience hands down. But that the Palma is in stock. It comes in uh, black and white, like I mentioned. Uh, it's a pretty cool device, and you can find a lot of reviews out there because, like I said, that is the one that blew up on TikTok recently. And to compare these a little bit closer to the, um, like with Amazon, they also have the page, which is 32 gigabytes. It's $250. It's a seven inch display. And it has buttons on the side, just like the Oasis does. Um, I could not figure out what charging port it had, but I have a feeling that, oh no, I did. It's USB-C, just kidding, it's USB-C. So it's already <laughs> better than the Oasis right then and there. Third-party cloud storage, so you could have like eBooks in Google Drive or your iCloud or whatever, micro USB, uh, or like a micro SD, I'm sorry. And then you could use a USB flash drive on it too. You can also share to apps. So you can link Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and you can share some of your highlights to them, which I thought was kind of cool. Uh, something we touched on. It's almost, like they, it's almost like they asked readers what they would like and then included that in the product development. Yeah, crazy. Amazing. Wow. Wow. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, it's Bluetooth and it also has wireless transfer. It has a larger battery. So instead of a hundred or 1,500 milliamp uh, battery, uh, which is pretty common for a lot of these e-reader devices, it has 2,300 milliamp battery. So that is like many more weeks of battery. Um, so they also have, I just want to briefly mention these, but I wanted to more kind of compare the uh, this to the Oasis that I covered, but they also have the Leaf and Leaf 2, which are come in at a little bit less, but have similar capabilities. So be sure to check those out if you're interested in the books products, the Onyx books e-readers. It's very fascinating. Man, I thought the Kobo was cool. That one may win the day. Yeah. Damn. All right. Yeah. I'm just tell blown us, away. Tell us about the Kobo, Kristen. I don't want to anymore. It's not as cool. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> the, it still so might the be the Kobo. right choice for somebody. It might be the right choice for somebody. Based on price point, it's the right choice for me. <laughs> uh, so the Kobo we have, uh, the first one up is Libra 2. And as a Libra, I'm definitely leaning towards this one. Um <laughs> It's a seven inch screen, waterproofing, 300 PPI screen display, Bluetooth audio. Um, I really like the, the page turning buttons. The other really nice thing is the screen is slightly recessed into mm -hmm. the frame, which I feel like is just kind of nice because I don't know about you, but I accidentally turn the page all the time. So to have something that I maybe wouldn't make that mistake with. And I. That is a feature I really like. Yeah. And I. I don't have a case on my Kindle or a screen cover on my Kindle, and I have, like, a scratch and a dent because I just fling that thing everywhere, and because it's not recessed, it it doesn't have as much protection as I feel a recessed screen would. Ooh, yeah. I didn't even think about the protection side because I also have a scratch in mine, so might be time for a new one. So the downside to Kobo is that it doesn't link to your Amazon Kindle. Mm -hmm. which means that it's probably not going to work with like Libby that has the Amazon format. Mm -hmm. um, so Kobo has their own app that you would have to go through to get books. And so um, I don't know a whole lot about that one. I don't know how extensive or expensive their library. Well, we covered it. Library. We covered it in the episode that I'll link in the cards. So they have a couple different options, Kobo does. Like you can do audio plus reading or you can do just reading and their their plans actually started out at $7.99. But to your point, the extent of their library selection for the books, the ebooks that they have at their disposal, you'll have to check out their website, which is linked through the description box in that other video. I would imagine if you have your own ebook that you're gonna have a fairly extensive library book selection i don't know mm -hmm. what the correct term there is but um as bobby talked about you can what was it called caliber that you use that yeah. third party app to swap um formats. so you could have a kindle swap the format and then i don't know if all that work is worth the recess screen <laughs> um but you never know so that one um is going to run you about 170 dollars uh, to upgrade a little bit, they have the Ellipsa 2E. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's how it's pronounced. It is now. <laughs> um, so that one is actually going to run about $350. Um, and this one is kind of going to be comparable to the uh, Amazon Scribe or the Kindle Scribe is kind of who it seems to be trying to compete with. Mm -hmm. um, 10.3 inch display screen, uh, two, 227 PPI. So a little bit lower on the quality side there. Uh, 32 gigabytes of storage, um, a magnetic stylus and a Bluetooth audio support. Um, so this one, it, actually when you like take notes and stuff, you, they kind of like stay in the margins. You don't have to go to that separate screen mm. like you do in Kindle. So you can just keep it in the margins. And the other really nice thing is you can convert the writing into text. Mm. 
So if you're like me and you have really terrible handwriting or you just want it to fit better, you can actually just convert it to text. Nice. Um, so that's one of the big things about that was just uh, being able to write on directly on that page instead of having to go to your highlights and notes and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so I am shocked. There's some big competitors coming for Kindle. And I feel silly for never having even known anything about them. Yeah, I'm gonna cover one more, uh, and it's it's like the OG though. So, and that's why I want to cover it. And it's from Barnes and Nobles, and it's the Nook Glow Light Four Plus. Um, it's two hundred dollars. It's their new, their latest, newest. It's trying to compete with the paper. Uh, the paper white from Amazon, as you mentioned, uh, you know, people are coming for them. Uh, it is a 7.8 inch screen with 300 PPI. It is waterproof up to three feet Bluetooth. It s supports files of EPUB and PDF, and it uses an USB-C. But um, back in the day, my first ever e-reader was not an e-ink device, it was, had an LCD screen, but it was a Nook because that was what was available at the time um, outside of, um, and I lived in Barnes & Noble's when I was, around the time I got this, I lived in Barnes & Noble's, so this is what my mother bought for me and I'm for, forever grateful even though my experience with that device wasn't very good. But I'm sure they've advanced upon that now and everything. But I just wanted to throw that one in there because it does exist. If you're looking at them, that's how it compares and falls with all of these other items. So those are different e-readers. If you're in the market, some specs about them, what might fit you better, uh, leave a comment down below and tell us which one you're most interested in. Cause like for me, I actually, if the Poke 5 was in stock and like I was in the market to purchase a new one, I really think I would buy that. And then I think my runner up would probably be the Palma, honestly, uh, just because of it being slightly more than just an e-reader, but not something I would like put a bunch of random apps on like I would my phone. So be sure to let us know down below which one you're most interested in or something interesting that you learned during this episode. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel and share this video with a friend if they're in the market for an e-reader. Um, and until next time, keep reading.